what I'm sharing is is one that has been uh, formulated by the Vietnamese National Caucus and the Vietnamese Theological College of the Union University of California. Okay, next is slide, please. Okay, we are our specific lesson for tonight is understanding the United Methodist local church structure. Okay, because of course we know at United Methodist we are a very structured church. Okay, this slide says this is the basic structure, and the second column is the leadership team. The basic structure is the church council, the board of trustees, these are the administrative committees, the committee on finance, the staff and parish relations committee. The Committee on Nominations and Leadership Development, no? which is the, called now the Committee on Lay Leadership Development. And then we have the lay leader, lay member of the annual conference, and then lay leadership team or council on ministries. That's the basic structure. And then we go on to the lay leadership team or the council on ministries. These are the Sunday school, communications, missions, United Methodist Women, United Methodist Men, you and Methodist Young Couples, Older Adults, UM Youth Fellowship, UMYF, no? uh, Children's Ministry, Social Services, Evangelism and Outreach, Caring Committee, Small Group Ministries, Worship Committee, Welcoming Committee, Food Services Committee. They are all grouped together in this council and ministries. And we will look at this as program committees of the local church. Okay, next is slide. And, uh, graphically, this is the basic organization of a uh, local UMC. You have the charge conference, of course, which meets every uh, year, once, once a year, uh, presided by the DS. And then you have the pastor, then the nominations and leadership, which is also chaired by the pastor, and you have the church council. The church council has the lay leader, the lay member of the annual conference, and then we have the SPRC, Staff Parish Relations Committee, the Finance Committee, the Trustees Committee, and the lay leadership you know, programs, as we have seen in the first and the other column. Next is slide. Mm -hmm. Our mission, the mission of the United Methodist Church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Okay, we all know that. And then next this slide. The Church Council, the purpose of the Church Council is to provide planning and implementing a program of nurture, outreach, and witness. We call that the now and resources in the local church. The second is to provide for the administration of its organization and temporal life. So uh, number three is to envision, plan, implement, and evaluate annually the mission and ministry of the church. So the church council is the basic administrative uh, uh, body of the church, okay? and that is its purpose. Next is slide. Now, these are the responsibilities of the church council. One, work with a pastor to build a shared vision for discipleship. So basically, the church council and the pastor work together. And then to plan ministries of nurture, outreach, and witness, or the uh, ministries of the church that help the congregation live its own, its God-given mission. And then... Ensure that these ministries are aligned with the mission of disciple making. Yes, sir. I'm in a webinar right now. I will just uh, call you later. But thank you. Mm. And ensure the and allocate allocate the human and material resources for implementing the ministry plan. Okay, so after planning, then we allocate the human and material resources, you no, know, the budget, 
and then provide an administrative infrastructure and then evaluate the effectiveness of the ministry plan, okay? Of course, that's part of administration, the evaluation, and then act as the administrative agency of the charge conference. So those are the responsibilities of the church council. Next slide. Okay, the role of the council chairperson, okay? The one who provides, the, who, who presides over the church council. Strive to be a spiritual leader, focus on ministry rather than on administration. Maintain a close and intentional working relationship with the pastor and lay leadership of the congregation. Okay. And then stay focused on the primary task and vision of the congregation. So it's the chairperson's role no? to stay focused on the primary task and vision of the congregation, then lead the visioning and strategic planning process within the local church. Okay, so because the church council is the one that does the planning, the pastor is the one who leads the visioning and strategic with the local church. And then actively guide the work of the council as preparing agendas, uh, conducting meetings, communicating with members, and monitoring the progress of the members. Okay? And then actively participate in developing learning, training experiences of the council. Because it's, of course, the council that org uh, organizes training programs. Uh, and so the pastor participates in developing this, uh, these training programs. And then understand the polity and doctrine of the United Methodist Church and become familiar with its resources and organization. So you know that the church council chairperson should have been uh, sabi natin, a veteranong member ng church, hindi mga bagong salta, because they have to understand the polity and doctrine of the United Methodist Church. Next slide. Okay, the partners in ministry of the church council per, per chairperson. Okay. Okay, number one, of course, the pastor or the pastors, if you have more than one. And then the lay leader and the lay or lay leaders, if it's a multi of congregation, and then staff pastor Paris Relations Committee, of course, because we know the SPPRC is the committee that monitors the work of the pastor. So this, the, this, this SPPRC is a partner of the council chairperson. And then the board of trustees, of course, uh, we, we, we will look at these committees one by one later on. And then the finance committee, which is a very important committee. It takes care of the, takes care of the church budget. And then the district annual conference and denominational leaders. The council chairperson should be in touch no, with the uh, officers uh, of the annual conference, the district, and the denomination, of course, the bishops. Okay, next slide. Uh, let's just skip this parliamentary procedure because this is also one of the roles of the chairperson to preside and, of course, to preside over a meeting, the chairperson should be very familiar with the Robert's Rules of Order. Next slide. Okay. Now, these are the pastor's responsibilities. One is the pastor is the spiritual leader. We all know that. And then the second is worship. So the pastor is the worship leader, the preacher, and a teacher. Okay. The pastor next is a trainer of lady. He, he does the training. He does not do the work of the lady because of course he's a clergy person but he trains the pastor trains the lady for their ministry okay the pastor is the administrative leader and steward of the vision okay he's the one who implements you no know? he looks uh, and then 
the custodian of institutional integrity, ibig sabihin, titingnan niya, ng the, if it's a United Methodist Church, it remains a United Methodist Church na may integrity. Hindi siya nagiging Pentecostal, hindi siya nagiging Baptist, ganun. Yung integrity of the institution, of the church, as a United Methodist institution. And then, the pastor is a participant in the UMC Connection. Of course, you know that our church polity is a connectional or connectionalism is, is, our, uh, is a character of our church polity. And of course, the pastor is the community minister. He does not only pastor the congregation, but also it, the pastor is a community, or is a pastor of the community. Next slide. Okay, now we go to the lay leader. Of course, you know that the lay leader and then the lay member of annual conference, usually the lay leader is also a lay member of the annual conference. No? But it can be two different persons depending on how the church conference elects. No? Because they, they may elect a lay leader who may not be a lay member of the annual conference. Pero maganda kung isang tao lang din yan. Sa so, mga small churches, isang tao talaga yan. And then, let's look at the lay leader. The lay leader is a member of the church conference. Is a member of the church council. The lay leader should be a member of the finance committee. The lay leader should be a member of the SPRC, the Staff Paris Relations Committee and the Nominations Committee or Lay Leadership and Nominations Committee. Yan. Kaya the Lay Leader actually, yun yung katapat ni Pastor na laiko. No? He is the prime no? lay person. He is the prime lay person of the uh, local church. And then we go to the lay member to the annual conference is this the, the lay member of the annual conference is the one who represents the laity represent, representative of the local church to the annual conference. And so the lay member is a member of the church conference. He is also a member of the church council, the finance committee, and the SPRC or Staff Paris Relations Committee. So these two are the key lay persons of the church. First, the lay leader and the lay member of the annual conference. Earlier, we discussed the council chairperson is also a lay, is a lay uh, member of the local church, but he's the chairperson of the church council. So, yung mga tatlong to, ang mga pangunahing laiko ng iglesia. Okay, next slide. Now, the, the, these are the staff parish, staff, uh, pastor staff parish PSPRC committee or PPRC. Okay? The staff parish relations committee works with the lead pastor, all ordained uh, lead, uh, leaders appointed by the bishop, the lay staff full time and part time, the congregation, okay? individually and corporately because this PRC should always consult the congregation. And then the SPRC works with candidates for licensed or ordained ministry. Silang magre-recommend ng mali-licensya na pastor, a local pastor, and also candidates to the ordained ministry. And then the SPRC works outside with the, uh, with the community outside of the church, no? Because it's the one yung namamagitan ng pastor at ang community ay ang SPRC. And of course, the SPRC consults with the district superintendent in the conference staff and general church staff. We go to the next slide. And then the SPRC also uh, uh, sees to it that the passionate standards no, of the conference are kept. Tinitingnan na niya yung tirahan ni Pastor. 
And then, and the conference requirements for continuing education and spiritual formation ng mga uh, pastor at ng staff. No? Then, the SPRC recruits, nurtures, and support candidates for certification of ordained ministry. Sila ang um, uh, nag screen na mga nare-recruit na magpastor at sila rin yung uh, nag-aano yung pag sa kanila and support them uh, for candidacy and ordained ministry. Okay, and then the SPRC, ito, conference policy related to sexual harassment and safe sanctuary. Siya rin ang magkikitinan ng mga policies na kung saan nakikita yung mga uh, behaviors, no? Either yung proper decorum ng, ng mga pastor ng uh, other staff of the church. And then, conference policies for ministerial evaluation. Sila rin yung mag implement ng evaluation ng mga pastor. No? And also, conference policies apply to lay employees. Kung may mga policies ng conference tungkol sa mga laiko na empleyado ng church, no? yung SPRC siya rin ang mag uh, implement Okay, next slide. Okay, the pastor at SPRC also reviews the salary of clergy and staff members. Sila yung magtatakda, no? They will try to comply as much possible with the conference actions on salaries of clergy. And then looks at the West working conditions, working space, office volunteers equipment, and working hours. Sila magtatakda. It's just like this PRC is the personal committee of the local church. Sinitingnan na yung mga working conditions, so working space, and uh, equipment, and working hours. And then also look at the benefits of, uh, of the pastors, travel expenses, allowance for attending conference session, continuing education for clergy and staff, and moving expenses. Yan, yung mga related to the expenses, uh, benefits of the clergy person. And then the French benefit for employees, okay, they see to it na may SSS, no? at uh, yung pension ng mga manggagawa, the workers' compensation, insurance, vacation, set the vacation policies, and others. Okay, next. The pastor staff relations committee now looks at interpretation, assessing of effectiveness, and providing feedback. Conductual, conducting annual assessment of uh, the uh, clergy and staff, consulting with the district superintendent when an appointment changes, saying goodbye to clergy and staff and welcoming the new pastor. Ito yung ano, uh, isa sa mga pinaka-importante na trabaho ng staff parish relations committee, yung pag-assess ng, uh, ng mga performance ng mga pastor, ng mga uh, Japonisa, uh, and then consult with the district uh, superintendent. And then also, if there's a change, no? if there's a change of uh, church appointment, sila yung mag, mag organize ng farewell and goodbye, and then welcoming the new pastor. Okay? Uh, here, no, last screen ko yung, ano, yung lecture natin. Ayan, the checklist to relating to lay staff. No? Ito yung mga church secretary, yung mga Japonisa, ganyan ito. So, job description, recruiting, advertising process, training qualification and certification standards, hiring, no? and then statement regarding sexual harassment and misconduct, evaluation procedures, promotion procedures, termination procedures, grievance procedures, affirmative action procedures, 
health and life insurance, pension benefits, relationship between employee supervision and PRC. These are standard procedure for personnel, no? per, per personal office, office, because the PRC is the personal office of the local church. Okay, next slide. Now, we go to the next committee, which is the finance committee. And under the finance committee are stewardship and finance. One is stewardship, nurturing generosity, and financial campaign. No? Um, mas maganda naman ang stewardship under sa finance committee because it looks at uh, stewardship is, is, is generating income, generating income for the local church. And the other is finance committee is raising money, managing money, and dispersing money. Okay, later on, we'll look uh, more closely at the finance committee next. Um, okay, the membership of the finance committee are the chairperson, the pastors, the lay member of the annual conference, the chairperson of the church council, the representative of the SPRC, the representative of trustees, lay leader, treasurer, is the chair of the stewardship committee, the financial secretary, the church business administrator, if any, and others as determined by charge conference. Okay, next slide. The role of the finance committee. Number one is budget. The second is financial report and substantiation, yung documentation yan, and then the annual audit. The finance committee is in charge of that. Next slide. The role of the financial secretary is to receive, record, deposit, and report to the treasurer. Okay. Then there will be record keeping is done by the financial secretary and offering, preparing, offering envelopes. Okay. Next slide. The role of the church treasurer is to keep accurate and detailed records, okay? This, this burst, yeah, this burst funds to the caucuses for which they have been contributed or uh, implement the budget. No, yung anong mga items na nandun. Make monthly remittances to the conference treasurer. Ito yung mga apportionments natin. Then be certain that reserve funds are not to be used for current expenses. Ibig sabihin yung mga trust funds and reserve funds should be kept as such and not become operating uh, budget. Okay, next. Okay, the role of the trustees to oversee, maintain, and supervise all local church property, Report annually to the conference. So, ang um, trustees is in charge of the all local church property, receive and administer all gifts made to the church, yung mga bequests, ganyan, mga donations, mga lupa, or, and the equipment. Make certain that all trust funds are invested properly and ensure that articles of incorporation of the local church are kept up to date. And then, be responsible in conjunction with pastor for all the use of the church union you know, articles of incorporation if this if the church the local church is incorporated so and then be responsible in conjunction with the pastor for all the use of the church buildings and grounds you know, and, you know, Kasi kung minsan may mga churches na nagpaparent ng property nila, so yung the church, board of trustees no, shall be responsible you know, for the use of this. Then maintain adequate insurance coverage on all church property. Importante yan kasi kung masunog yung church o madestroy ng church ang mga typhoons, dapat may mag church insurance na mag uh, co cover nun. And then submit to the finance committee annual budget request for insurance, property maintenance improvement, and new property uh, purchases. Yung mga acquisitions ng capital expenditures ng properties, equipment ng church as a board of trustees. Then be accountable to the church conference and to the church council. So the Board of Trustees reports to the church conference and also to the church council. 
Okay. Next slide. Now, this is the Nominations and Leadership Development Committee, uh, which is the chair of this is the pastor. And then the, this this the lay leadership development committee. The the duties are discernment of spiritual gifts. Sila nakakakita, no? Kung ano yung mga sino yung dapat na uh, ilagay sa mga key positions, especially in church. Kasi titingnan nila yung gifts, no? Gifts to nominate lay leaders to various leadership positions of the church, no? And the areas of consideration, male and female, young and old, ethnicity. Ito nga uh, ito, dapat mayroong good mixture so that all uh, sectors of the church are represented as officers in the local church. Okay, next. Okay. Now, I think that the overview of the, it's an overview of the local church uh, structure and the key no, administrative committees of the local church. For the Taisa second lecture, if you have no questions about that, but if you can, we'll go to the second lecture uh, and we can have the, the question and answer later on, on that day. Okay? Okay, put the title here. Meron kasing um, comment na masyadong heavy, okay, masyadong heavy yung structure of our local church na hindi nasusunod sa mga small local churches kasi marami naman tayo small churches. No? May mga karamihan medium and there are a few large churches. But we have uh, churches na mga bagong churches pa lang, sabihin natin five years or below or sometimes ten years hindi pa rin ganoon uh, karami ang membro kaya hindi makasunod doon sa local church organizational structure so some have proposed a simpler a simpler leadership structure ito na yon okay next slide ayan ito ang review niya yung the primary tasks of the local church para ba to palitan Okay, this is the primary tasks of the local church as in, in the Book of Discipline, paragraph 243. Okay, the local church shall be organized that, so that it can pursue its primary task and mission no, in its own community, reaching out and receiving with joy those who will respond, encouraging people in the relationship with God and inviting them to commitment to God's love in Jesus Christ providing opportunities for them and to seek to seek to strengthen and growth in spiritual formation and supporting them to um, lovingly and justly in the power of the Holy Spirit as faithful disciples. Okay, next slide. Anong <laughs> Okay, so the local church, now in carrying its primary task, it shall be organized so that adequate provision is made for uh, these basic responsibilities. Okay, ito yung basic responsibilities na dapat na, na ma-fulfill no? na sa local church. So planning and implementing a program of nurture, outreach, and witness. Uh, now, ministries for persons and families within and without the congregation. Number two, providing for effective pastoral and lay leadership. Number three, providing for financial support, physical facilities, and legal obligations of the church. Then four, uh, utilizing the appropriate relationships and resources of the district and the uh, annual conference, then providing for the proper creation, maintenance, and disposition of documentary record material of the local church and seeking inclusiveness in all aspects of life. So, basta ma-fulfill itong functions na to, then the local church, the book of discipline, 
give some leeway for the local, the local church to make some alternative uh, structure, organizational structure, if only to fulfill these six responsibilities, these basic responsibilities of the local church. Next slide. Now, ito yung disciplinary required committees and officers, more like what we looked at in the first presentation. So that's the church council has that council chair, the treasurer, the secretary, the lay member to the annual conference, and then the lay leader. And then we looked at the committees, administrative committees of the local church. That is uh, one, the trustees, the board of trustees, three to nine persons and two thirds two-thirds of the board of trustees should be professing members. And then, which means you can have members of the BOT who are not members of the church, but who have expertise in property management. Okay? And then we have the Pastor Paris Relations Committee, SPRC, the five to nine persons, all professing members, plus lay leader and lay member. So three to nine, that's already minimum of eight, trustees plus eight, magiging 18, no? And then the nominations and leadership committee, you have three to nine persons again, all professing members plus lay leader and lay member. And that's uh, uh, composed of 11. And then the finance committee, now the membership is not defined in the book of discipline, but you have the auditor, counting teams, and financial secretary. Kung titingnan natin, ito kasi yung mga required ng, ng present book of discipline natin. So, ang daming tao na kailangan. Dito na lang, oh, council cha, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, kagad, and then 9 trustees, at least uh, 3 to 9, sabihin nyo. And then you have five in the pastor relations committee, 8 plus 6, 14, plus 3, 17, no? plus the finance committee, tatlo, 20. You have at least 20 officers as uh, a church that are required no? by the book of discipline. Now, sometimes no? you don't have 20 parang members who can occupy no? this, kaya nakakaroon ng duplication. Yung isang tao, halos members siya ng ap apat na committee o limang committee. And so, parang structure heavy yung church. And therefore, the, the, uh, there is a proposed uh, alternative no? as long as the local church is able no? to fulfill its basic responsibilities, then you can have an alternative organizational structure. Next is slide. Ito yun. Ito yun. Yung the church council, the single board model or alternate, alternate formula. You have the, at the center is the program and finance. No? The program and finance. You have the chairperson, the treasurer, the lay leader, and lay members, uh, the key officers. And then you have three members of the board of trustees, the three members of the SPRC. The nominations is uh, the pastor serve our church and three, uh, three to nine members. This is alternative or single board model. You have only three, six, plus four, ten. Be, ten basic officers of the church. Kalahati, dung 20 na na-compute natin dung sa disciplinary uh, required na officers ngayon. Uh, so this is an, a single board model, an alternate. Instead of 20 key officers, you have 10. Okay, next. Okay, membership of the church council, ito. No? Uh, the chairperson of the council, then the lay leader, the chairperson or representative of the SPRC, representative of the finance, representative of the board of trustees, the church treasurer, the lay member to the annual conference, the president of the UMM, president or representative of the women, and then a young adult representative, 
a representative of the UMYF and the pastor, the K-12 yung pastor. No? No, it, that would be the membership of the council. Uh, mas, mas payak siya, 12 no? persons. Okay, next slide. Now, the church council single board model has this. One chairperson of the council, recording secretary, the treasurer, the lay leader to the annual conference, which could be the lay leader himself, and then the representatives of UMM and UMW, the finance chair, the property chair or trustees, the personal chair or the SPRC, the young adult uh, if available, and youth if available, and the pastor. The nominations is still, the chairperson is still the pastor and recommends that majority of the members uh, are not uh, on the council. Okay, so one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, oh, more or less to twelve members of the of, of the church or are become officers and become members of the council. Okay, next is slide. Okay, ito na yung question group natin. What did you hear? What, uh, what questions do you have? And put this in the chat as your group returns. Uh, next slide. Ito yung resources na ginamit. Okay, but this is our question and answer time. Okay, I think we have uh, 10 minutes. No? This is 10 minutes to 8 o'clock. Okay, that ends our presentation for tonight. No? It's an overview of the disciplinary uh, provisions of, for the church, uh, local church structure, and then the alternative that is being proposed. Yes, here. Okay, thank you so much, Doc Homer. Let me stop the screen share. All right, so we are now open for your questions. Sino pong may mga katanungan sa inyo? Diba, ang ganda po ng ating topic. May mga ilan po sa inyo ang mga nagtatanong din regarding this. Yeah, ito ang ating lecture. Ayan, sige. Uh, Pastor Federico Estioco. Go ahead, please. Uh, may bag nga... Hello, kano na kan, sir? Well, love ta. <laughs> well, good, Pastor. Thank you po. Ah... Uh, uh, Base po dito sa lecture po natin, marami pong mga tao po na kailangan doon po sa lahat ng mga, lalo na po sa members at sa, sa, sa ka-chairperson po. Ay, based ko na lang po dito sa charts namin, uh, kunti po yung mga members po natin. Pwede po pang bawasan yung mga numbers of members doon po sa mga, lalo na po sa mga committees po and then doon sa kwa. At yes, sa po. kailang... Ilan po ba po itong pag-chair personan doon ng isang tao po? Ilang po, ilang committee po ang pwedeng uh, mag-chair person ng isang tao po? Yun lang po, sir. Oo. Ang, ang, ang maganda talagang formula, eh, yung isang tao, mag-chair siya ng isang committee at pwede siyang mag-member ng tatlong committee. Yun. Yun ang parang ideal para hindi naman ang daming masyado. At saka yung pwedeng i-trim down yung membership na kalagay naman dyan, 3 to 9. Yung 3 to 9, minimum lang na 3 yung, yung board of trust, yung ano mga, mga nandyan, finance committee, na, nakalagay naman dyan, yung minimum ay 3, 3 members lang. No? At ang maximum ay 9. Kung kukunti lang ang membro, siyempre, i-minimum na lang natin. Tapos, sabi ko nga, yung isang tao, dapat mag-chairman siya ng isang committee la. Pastor Federico, meron po ba kayong follow-up? O nasagot na po ang inyong katanungan? Wala na po. Kasi konti lang po kasi yung member natin dito. Kaya, nadubli-dubli po. Sabi ni Sir, ni Pastor kami na nadubli-dubli talaga yung chairperson nila. Tapos nag-member pa sila sa mga ibang committee. And then, kung mag-meeting, sila-sila rin. Tapos sila-sila rin lang. Parang, parang, parang padubli-dubli po. Kaya, matanong po po yun. Kung pwedeng bawa sa, pwede naman po pa. Salamat po. 
Thank you. Thank you po. Thank you. Actually po, yung sinabi po ni Pastor Federico, the comer, hindi na bago yan sa UMC, no? Yung mm-hmm. doble-doble. I mean, oh, oh. wag na tayong lumayo. Dito na lang sa local church ko. Dalawang local church ko eh. Diyan sa Kapas at saka dito sa Baguio. Kapag nagbi-meeting kami, pare-pare yung mukha. <laughs> <laughs> Pero sana po, ang isa sa mga pupwede natin gawin, nabanggit ko nga kanina sa isang conversation namin dito sa office na yung leadership sana hindi siya mag- mahinto sa isang tao lang. Kailangan may continuation, may mentoring na nangyayari. Kasi ang mahirap po, siya ang church council chair ngayon, tapos kapag nawala siya, walang continuation ba? Walang susunod na leader. Oo. At uh, yun nga, maganda nga rin po yung may participation yung ating mga kabataan, ang ating mga young people because they can really handle positions too. So bigin, pagkatiwalaan natin sila, yung ating mga kabataan po. Uh, kung anong kayang gawin ng mga matatanda, eh, kayang-kayang gawin na rin namin mga bata. Di ba? Alright. <laughs> Sige po. Uh, Ma'am Cora, you're raising your virtual yeah. hand. Uh, yes, go ahead, please. Uh, good evening. Thank you, Dr. For the lecture, actually, it has refreshed again my my ideas on this church structure of which we had been conducting um, trainings to the local churches, to the district, and to the annual level. Mm-hmm. My my query is. Ito ay hindi na, it is very silent sa Book of Discipline. Doon sa isang local church na lalo na kung mga uh, barangay church, barrio, agkakabagyan, nagiti members. But so several who are transient in the church. Now, it is silent kung nagtatay in the Book of Discipline nga, uh, is there no no limitation on electing dagitek uh, kakabagyan to the church council okay meron pong limitation lang na nakikita sa discipline doon sa handling ng money dapat huh. yung financial secretary at sa yung treasurer at yung cf uh, council and uh, uh, finance chair, hindi dapat magkaka-first degree relative. Hindi dapat galing sa isang pamilya o galing sa isang household. Kasi alam natin, para mapangalagaan yung check and balance sa handling of money. But otherwise, no? otherwise halimbawa, yung, yung chairperson, hindi dapat niya asawa yung church treasurer. Ganun. <laughs> Ganun. Kasi... Uh, una na yun, delikadesa yun. So, but it's also part of the provisions of the discipline. Tungkol dun yung sa paghandle ng pera, hindi dapat magkakapamilya. Okay. I understand that, Doctor. Pero what I'm is, hindi sa finance committee yun. Say, for example, the chair, the lay leader, the SPPRC chair, they are all first degree cousins. Now, uh, ang nakikita namin dito, parang parang very close sila na to the extent na yung, yung mga suggestions na ng congregation, especially yung mga hindi, na mem- hindi relatives to this clan, mm. eh, hindi na na-entertain. Yun ang feeling namin. Okay. Uh, so, po. Dahil yung chairperson ng nominations or yung lady district committee ay yung pastor. The pastor sees to it mayroong balance. No? Meron din mga pastor na kung minsan, pero los buenos, eh, talagang ano nila yung sinasadya nila na mayroong yung mga close lang sa kanila ang ilalagay nila doon sa council. And therefore, so that they can, you know, uh, have what they want, no? Pero ang maganda talagang uh, nominations committee o lay leadership committee, 
yung tinitingnan niya yon yung sinasabi niyo na mayroong hindi dapat nagkaroon ng magkakaroon ng isang controlling party na lahat na nilang gusto nilang uh, mangyari yun lang ang masusunod dahil nako-control nila yung ano na uh, dapat yung lay leadership committee sees to it na magkaroon ng balance of power uh, you have said it so doctor yung yung chairperson ng lay leadership committee uh, just nomin sure. yung mga tao na nako-control din niya yung hmm. malalapit yun nga kung minsan <laughs> kaya na eh, that should be bathed in prayer talaga yung pagpipili ng mga leaders no okay and the, the last or the second may suggestion ako doctor if possible kasi I still believe that it's still part of the structure of the church hmm. uh, would take it in here the definition and delineation of the responsibilities of a an administrative pastor from that of an associate pastor. Ah, opo, yan, yan ay task din yan po ng SPRC. Yung job responsibilities ng delineation dapat. Yung SPRC, bibigyan niya, written dapat yan, written. It should be specific and given to the persons involved, yung associate pastor and, at saka administrative pastor. Meron yung joke tungkol dyan ni eh, na yung associate pastor e eh, aso na shit pa. <laughs> Pardon da. Ano? <laughs> kaya yun. Uh, kaya ang nag-i-intervene talaga dyan or sets the policies of job descriptions ay dapat yung SPRC. Eh, mabuti. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> kaya dapat yung mga ano, administrative pasto ISPRC ay persons of you know integrity and ano, mabuting kalooban <laughs> okay umiinit ang ating diskusyon <laughs> sige po thank you ma'am Cora ayan uh, tatlo ang nakataas ng kamay nauna si DS Rudel Claro Layugan ng MSD Metro Santiago go ahead DS Okay, magandang uh, gabi po sa inyong lahat sa uh, mga, mga tamang gagawa. Good evening, uh, Sir Kier and uh, Doc Omer. Uh, ako na po ay uh, naalala ko yung mga lecture ni Doc Omer sa Church Administration when I was in the seminary. Uh, both from the masteral and uh, the doctoral uh, program. Ayan ang tanong ko, Sir Homer, ganito po. Uh, dapat ang mga leader, di po ba, ay nagme-mentor para hindi sila, hindi sila ang, uh, hanggang uh, mamatay sila, sila ang chairman ng council o ng mga committee na naka, naka, uh, sanayan na nila. O kaya nagpapalit-palit na lang sila sa mga offices na o mga positions in the church council. Meron bang limitation ang uh, term of uh, office ng isang uh, leader, chairman o, ng mga ng council o ng mga administrative committees o ng mga working committees sa estruktura ng United Methodist Church po? Ah, uh, um, uh, doc. Ang, ang prescription, suggestion ng ano anong board of this uh, book of discipline ay three years. Three years talaga okay. yung term ang talagang ano. And they can be reelected for another term of six years. But uh, it's the nominations committee, uh, the church conference then next is that kasi ay karamihan ng alam ko ang mga, uh, mga local churches sa church conferences ay maximum yung four years o, na ibibigay nila. And then, tama nga yung sinasabi mo na nag-titrip to Jerusalem lang sila. Nag- <laughs> <laughs> Nag-change seats lang sila. Pagka hindi chairperson, may leader siya. Ba, para yung politika ngayon sa atin. Mamaya yung uh, chairperson, yung asawa niya ang next, tapos yung anak ang next, yan. Parang tinituluan na nila yung posisyon. <laughs> 
No? It, it is still the duty of the nomination, or yung leadership committee. No? Kasi may mga very powerful ang personality na like ko na mm-hmm. membro na palitan sila. No? For some one reason or another, alam ko may mga churches na alam ako na, na yung chairperson ng council eh, uh, 10 years na siya doon. No? Ganon. No? Kasi natatakot silang palitan siya. Yung ganon, may mga threats. Ganon. But it is the pastoral duty of the, kasi eh, yung nominations in the leadership committee is the pastor. Kaya nga pastor eh. Kasi para may pastoral duty. Natitingnan naman niya yung that the, in the, if it is in the best interest of the church already to have a change of leadership, eh yung pastoral responsibility niya, siya yung mag-prepare <laughs> ng mga bagong papalit at i-prepare din yung paglisan ng isang leader. Dr. Hmm. Homer, may paloob po ako ron sa yeah. part na yan. Kasi yung ginamit na term sa Book of Discipline namin ay eh, it is recommended. Oo, yun nga yun. It is it is recommended na sa, sana ay yeah. tatlong taon. Tatlong taon. Three consecutive years. Ngayon, yeah. dahil sa salitang recommended, parang walang, ano, walang ngipin. Hindi ito, hindi ito requirement that uh, the Book of Discipline should, should require. So, hindi kayo pwede tayong uh, magsusog. Ito yung uh, kung ano ko, Dr. Omer. Recommend, recommendation na sana i-amend natin yung part na yon para para maging uh, talagang required na uh, three years na. Hindi po kaya pwede yun? Pwede yun sa charge conference. Kasi nga, uh, yung local church has that kind of uh, authority then to make those uh, yung to make uh, alternative recommendations from the book of discipline kasi may mga churches din kasi na wala talagang mapagpilihan kaya ipapalit mo kung tatanggalin mo siya after three years ganun may mga ganun din kasi na situation yung bang yung kaya hindi ginawang uh, mandatory na uh, must kaya may no ilang yun or it is recommended lang kasi may mga churches na talaga na hindi rin talaga applicable yun dahil wala talaga ipapalit at this time kasi parang mga five years pa lang yung church from mga 10 years eh talaga yung leader, leaders wala pa talagang pwede kang ipalit kaya kaya mo muna siya mga tipong ganon <laughs> May, Meron pa akong pangalawang uh, katanungan Dr. Comer kung okay lang po Okay, okay lang po <laughs> Kasi ganito yung ating uh, istruktura Uh, Dokom, nakita ko napakaganda po ng presentation ninyo. Kaya lang sa kultura natin dito sa Pilipinas, uh, sa ating PCC, bakit kaya yung chairman ng Church Council ang siyang nakikitang pinaka makapangyarihang uh, uh, posisyon sa structure ng United Methodist Church? E bakit yung, uh, yung posisyong iyon ng Church Council ang siyang uh, nakikita parang ang uh, kanya ang kanyang office na ito ay parang kingship siya, Our... siya yung king ng church tama po yun alam niyo kung bakit kasi in our polity hindi personal ang mga positions we you know kaya nga annual conference uh, mm-hmm. uh, district conference uh, kaya yung chairperson dahil siya nagpipreside doon kasi ginagawa yung mga decisions eh niyo sa sa council kaya yung chairperson ng council kuminsan lakas ng influence niya sa mga decisions at yung pastor at lay leader they implement they implement decisions of the council implementers ang pastor no uh, sa polity natin the decision making is done by the council kaya tuloy yung chairperson ng council kung kaya niya ibraso yung council siya na susunod kaya taga implement lang ni pastor at saka si lay leader front to yan pastor at lay leader talaga ang nag implement ng program nagpe-preside lang yung chairperson ng council pero kung minsan, yung bank personality ng chairperson ay nakaka-influence heavily on the decision-making. So, kaya tuloy, yun, yung 
chairpreneur na council na paka ano powerful <laughs> na ano dahil hawak niya ang mga tao So, thank you very much, uh, Doc Homer. Well said po, well noted po naman yung mga sagot po ninyo. Thank you very much po. Thank you po. Thank you po, Doc Rodel. Alright. Next, Pastor Galanote, ang ating suki. Sige po, go ahead. Uh, magandang gabi, Sir Kier, uh, Dr. Homer. Naririn niyo po ba ako? Yes. Good evening po. Sige uh, po, go ahead. Uh, sobrang, sobrang napakaganda po yung uh, lecture ngayon patungkol po sa uh, Church Council Job Description. Totoo po lahat ng mga nabanggit ni Dr. Homer. Kaso nga lang po, uh, may mga local churches na kung saan ay ini-implement naman yung mga jobs description po nila at uh, may mga local churches na sobra-sobra na po yung, yung term ng kanilang uh, office. Mayroon ng one decade, uh, may higit na. Tapos, uh, totoo po na yung pastor ko ang uh, chairman ng nomination, kahit gusto niya pong baguhin, kahit irambul lang po yung, yung uh, set ng uh, church council officers ng isang iglesia lokal, ay yun po yung uh, purok dolo na ginagalit ng pastor. Ang mga church council na gagawa na sila ng petition para mapalis. Kasi ayaw po nilang matanggal doon sa kanilang posisyon kahit one decade ng mahigit na sila po ay kalimbawa, chairperson ng church council, gano'n at saka yung iba. At sa pa doon, ang nakita ko po, Sir Kier, at saka, do, at saka kay Dr. Homer, yung kanyang presentation, ay yung rules po ng PPRC. Napakaganda po. Tamang-tama po yun. Uh, kung misa kasi, instead na yung PPR sana ang ang kikilos o tumingin sa lahat ng mga pangangailangan ng ng pastor, kung minsan parang baliwala yung, yung PPR, mas nakararami namang nagsasabi yung mga hindi sila kasama sa committee ng PPR. Ganoon po ang, ang mga karanasan at observasyon sa mga iglesia lokal. At, at isa pa, mayroong isang uh, board and committees na ang chairperson po, particularly po sa board of trustees, mayroong mga charges na ang chairperson po nila ay yung asawa at saka yung treasurer ay yung asawa. Di po ba bawal po doon sa sa discipline po natin? Kung talagang titingnan po natin yung mga uh, officer o uupo doon sa isang board and committees. Yun po, Dr. Homer, yun po sana ang mabigyan ng isang pagkakataon na mga laiko din sana ang mag-aral nito para malaman nila ang nilalaman ng Book of Discipline patungkol po sa compost ng ating uh, uh, Church Council uh, regarding doon sa ating Book of Discipline. Yun po, Sir Homer. Thank you po. Okay. Yun. Actually, ang, ako, ang aking sagot dyan ay still education. I-educate mo sila. Tapos magkaroon ng training. No? At pagkita mo ang mga roles of uh, mga officers, ganyan, makikita nila doon eh. Ay, si ano pala mas bagay diyan? Ay si ni ganito man lang bagay niya. Yung yung bang uh, bubuksan yung isip nila, no? Uh, I think that's the, still the key to we is education. Yung karunungan, malalaman nila, nakaroon sila ng wisdom and then the pastoral care will help them to overcome yung mga ganyang dictatorial dictatorial and the the local. Ayan. Ah, ano? Opo, sir natin sila. Training. Tama po. The Homer, I would like to second devotion. <laughs> yeah, with what you said. Talaga, education po talaga ang kailangan po sa ating pong mga simbahan. All right, Sige po. Uh, I think last na po yata ito. Sir, uh, si Pastor Alvaro. 
Hello, magandang gabi po, ha, Pastor. Yung gusto, yung gusto kong itanong, itanong naman nila yung dalawang nauna sa akin tungkol sa term na mga officers ng Church Council. Pero gusto ko lang po idagdag na meron, ka din, meron kasing sitwasyon. Halimbawa po yung li, li, uh, li leader, akala niya pag na-elect na siya, pura ipur na siya, hindi na siya pwedeng palitan. <laughs> hindi niya... Yun din alam ng yun din alam niya kaya mula nung natayong kapilya hanggang ngayon siya pa rin ang leader. Hindi niya alam na mayroon din siyang uh, term limit na may uh, one year or three years lang. Yun lang ang nagdagdag ko doon, Pastor. Yes. Kasi kung minsan na nagagaya sila sa pastor, may mga pastor kasi na 10 taon na doon. Kaya eh bakit si pastor hindi naman napalitan? Di okay pa rin ako, mahal. <laughs> So, what our kids, we, we know na ito nga, kaya nagkakasaroon tayo ng webinar para we are reminded of some ano, disciplinary provision. Yeah. Thank you po. Maraming salamat po sa inyo pong mga sinabi sa ating pong natutunan ngayong pong gabi. So, rest assured, uh, as you all know that we have uh, the materials na sinend po sa ating ni Doc Homer at I also share it, uh, shared it po sa inyo ngayon sa ating pong live chat. However, uh, isi-send ko po ulit sa inyo sa ating pong mga annual conferences GC. Bibigay din po sa mga district superintendent po natin. At mm-hmm. isi-send po sa email. Paulit-ulit po yan. Um, minsan po yung paulit-ulit din po. Alam nyo naman, tao din tayo, di ba? Nakakasawa din po kasi yung paulit-ulit. Sana naman, when you receive it, Keep it. Keep At kapag kailangan ninyo, kukunin nyo kung saan nyo tinago. ba? Diba? Hindi po yung every now and then, I already send it sa inyo. Maya at maya, here, do I, uh, meron ba tayong ganitong lecture? Pero alam nyo naman na nag-attend kayo mismo na meron tayong ganong lecture. ba? Diba? So I just want you to, you know, kailangan din po tayong maging responsible sa ating pong sarili, sa ating pong uh, position. Uh, et- email nyo. <laughs> Opo, di ba? Uh, panahon na po na kailangan naman nating mag-grow. Uh, let's be dependent and at the same time independent. Mm-hmm. All right? In uh, in learning this kind of uh, things. So, yun. At i-maximize po natin yung paggamit po ng technology. Wag po kayong matakot gumamit ng teknolohiya, ha? Uh, kung kailangan nyo naman ng tulong po, pwede po kayong magtanong. Pero sana kapag tinanong po ninyo ngayon, uh, pag-aralan po natin. Alright? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm saying this kasi po, I'm just basing it on experience din. Uh, kasi may mga natatanggap po akong ano, mga request na hindi lang isang beses, kundi paulit-ulit yung request na yon. So there, uh, I just want you to... Ano, to take it seriously yung pagtuto po natin sa paggamit ng technology at saka yung paggamit po ng ito po yung pong ating mga webinars and lectures natin all right so i think we're good for today it's already 8:16 uh, who will lead us in our closing prayer ah okay nandito si ano DS Edgardo Dordolo DS lead us po sa ating pong closing prayer Uh, all right. Before we have our closing prayer, our bishop will would like to greet us also. Sige po, bishop. Uh, ayun po. Hello. Thank you very much uh, ating lecture ngayon. Thank you, uh, Dr. Homer, uh, for this wonderful lecture. And uh, nandito lang ako sa kabilang opisina. Uh, we have um, a uh, meeting with some of our church leaders. Pero bless na bless ako at na-launch na itong ating uh, leadership training seminar na to. So thank you very much, Dr. Homer. Thank you to everyone in the Zoom at sa Facebook. And we hope that uh, you will attend next Monday ulit uh, sa second lecture ni Dr. Homer refers. So uh, let's praise God and let's have our, op- our closing prayer. Sinong mag-pray here? Uh, si D.S. Dordolo po. Okay, D.S. Edgar will lead us in prayer. Hello. Pray po tayo. 
Naririnig po? Yes po. Yes, yes. yes po, Bishop. Tapo Diyos, man nakabalin. Lay dayawan da ka. Igundaway mi, o Diyos, nga nagtitipon. Iti da ito yung uh, webinar. Giyaman kami, ti biyag ni Dr. Homer. Stamat ka ni Sir Kier. Nga nangi... Yes, na ulo pa da ito yung uh, webinar. Yaman kami kadag iti ado nga uh, na sursuro mi ti da ito yung uh, gundaway kaya dawatin mi kan ka o Diyos ti agtultuloy nga panangidalan mo pa da kami iti uh, in kami panang tamang iti pa, uh, pakasignan ti Glaciam may papan iti panagpangulo tap no iglesia o Diyos kaya tagtultuloy nga rumang ay iti ministeryo. Dawatin mi kan kang rod apo, bandisyon nam titunggal may isa kada kami nga nagatender kada ito nga webinar o ray met apo iti patgan mi nga obispo tutuloy ka nga mangi paay iti salon at pigsa sirib ken uh, ragsak na nagtultuloy nga agserbe Uh, iti Iglesiam, iti Bea, dawati mikan ka, iti panangaywan mo kada kami, O Diyos, yes. iti da ito yung Arabi, nga panagina nami, kat pakawanem, dag iti anyaman, nga nagkurangan mikan ka, tinagan ti Ama, ti Anak, ng Espiritu Santo, Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Paul. God bless you. Thank you. Good evening, Bishop. <laughs> Thank you so much for the Thank you, Sir Homer. Thank you so much. God bless everyone. Thank you, Paul. Good night, Paul. Thank you, next Monday. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Thank you, Paul. 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 Thank you